All right. Our uh, discussion today. Our discussion is on, it's a review of inorganic chemistry. And I want you to remember that at any time, if I'm, I'm going to go through this pretty fast, and you can always pause the recording and go back and watch it again if you need to. We're, we're going to review the structure of an atom. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. This uh, PowerPoint has lots of noise in it. So take that for what it's worth. All right, to review chemistry and atomic structure, the basic analogy is this, that an element, let me grab my marker a second, an element is made up of all the same kind of atom. So atoms make up elements, a molecule is the basic unit of a compound. Okay, it's a really, this is a, an important concept, a molecule like H2O, two hydrogen atoms attached to an oxygen atom makes the compound water, whereas one, a whole bunch of hydrogen atoms together make the element hydrogen. Okay. Remember that an element is made up of only one kind of atom. If you break apart the atoms, you still have a whole bunch of atoms of hydrogen, for example. All right. So, uh, interesting thing about molecules and compounds to review is that, is that water, if we take two elements such as hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen is a gas, so it's a gas, it's explosive, oxygen is a gas, it's explosive, uh, it's a fuel for fire, but if we put those together, we get a very different compound, water, which is liquid at room temperature and not explosive at all, actually. So, a review that we can make something very different by combining elements, essentially. It's a dumb analogy, but you can read it if you want. So, what's in an atom? Okay, remember that an atom has protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. Electrons are found in orbitals circling the atom. We're not going to go into orbitals in great gory detail. That's for chemistry. Uh, the mass of protons is one atomic mass unit. That's the definition. An atomic mass unit is the mass of a proton <laughs> and the mass of a neutron. Electrons basically have zero mass. They're actually one 1,760th of a proton's mass, which means it would take 1,760 electrons to make one proton, and there is no atom that big with that large, that many electrons. So we just call it zero. Uh, and then to look at the anatomy of an atom, since we're in anatomy class, whoops, uh, the electrons are circulating around the outside of the atom, and the nucleus is in the middle containing protons and neutrons. The problem with this drawing is that if this were actually the size of the nucleus, the electron, uh, the electrons zing around in a cloud as big as from here to McDonald's. Okay, if the nucleus were actually that big. So some atom drawings. We have hydrogen here has one proton in its nucleus. The nucleus is drawn very large. A proton is actually very small. And one electron circling around the outside. Something like carbon, uh, building block of us, and all living things. Six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus. So 12 times bigger than the nucleus of hydrogen. And then six electrons circulating around the outside in different orbitals. And again, we're, we're not going to care so much about orbitals in this class. Uh, so then the net charge for any atom should be zero. It means there should be the same number of protons and electrons. Remember that the number of protons defines the atom. The number of protons defines the atom. We call that the atomic number.
the mass number of the atom is the sum of the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So, uh, if we're looking at, I'm sorry, if we're looking at a periodic table box and we have something like 6 carbon 12.011, this is the atomic number, it's the number of protons, this is the number of protons plus neutrons. 12.011, you see that it's not an uh, even number, we'll talk about that in a minute. So what happens if an atom has gains or loses electrons? Because remember, the definition is it's defined by its atomic number. So what if it, which is the number of protons. So what happens if it gains or loses electrons? Well, then we call it an ion. We will be talking about ions quite a bit in here because ions are, <laughs> when we talk about elements you're made of, many elements inside of a human are, are in ionic form. And they are used as ions. The charge is used. What if an atom gains or loses neutrons? On the previous slide, we talked about the fact that carbon 6, 12.011, it's not a round number. That's the average atomic mass because atoms have more or less neutrons sometimes. Uh, and we call that an isotope a heavier or lighter form of the same substance. We may be referring to isotopes a little bit later on in this class. If an atom gains or loses protons, then of course you have a different element. And this is what happens in an atomic bomb or in other forms of nuclear fission, which is where the nucleus is actually split and all kinds of energy is released. So, it's not so important you remember this, but the definition of the atomic mass is that it's the weighted average of all the isotopes of an element. 12.011 uh, is carbon, but it's not exactly 12. That's the average of how frequently they occur. So if 1% of all of the isotopes of carbon have 13, a mass of 13, 10% have a mass of 14, uh, 0.02% have a mass of 11, and most of them have a mass of 12. They just do the math and get an average. Okay? Uh, Ernie's Big Adventure. Ernie's Big Adventure involved taking a thin sheet of gold, and Ernie had a thin sheet of gold, and so he decided he was going to shoot uh, particles at the thin sheet of gold. And on the other side, we're talking about particles. Is he shooting? Um, drawing a blank right now. He's shooting electrons at this thin sheet of gold atoms. And every particle that gets through will leave a mark. He's got x-ray plates over here. And so he took this thin sheet of gold, pure gold, and he shot using a gun through there, or using this little thing called an electron gun. He shot these through there, and they should, if they got through, they would leave a mark on the x-ray plate on the other side. Well, what he found when he did it is, whoops, sorry. Most of the atoms he shot at the thin sheet of gold made it through. A few bounced back and were picked up here. He thought, that's pretty strange. To me, the gold looks solid. It looks like a piece of gold metal. But what was really ha what's really true is his conclusion, which we now take to be true, is that atoms are made of mostly empty space. And I referred to that earlier. But that was Ernest Rutherford's experiment to show it. I don't care if you actually do the 288 rule, but you should be able to do this, and we'll do this in class tomorrow, to be able to construct an atom that has an atomic number of 6 and a mass number of 14. Okay? Here's an example of a periodic table. Uh, groups go down, periods go across. All the atoms in this group 
have the same number of electrons in their outermost energy level. So these all have one electron on the outside. These all have two electrons on the outside. These are what are called noble gases. Helium, neon, argon, and so on. They're full. They don't want to give away or get electrons. We'll come back to that idea. So here's some review of that. Same number of electrons in the outer level. They react the same way. They're likely to form similar ions. And as you move down a group, you add one electron shell each time. Again, not important to us. Elements on the farther right get less reactive as you go down a column. Periods. Elements in the same period have the same number of energy levels. And as you go across, you increase the atomic number by one. And one electron is added to the outer shell each time, which makes them more or less reactive. That is a review of inorganic chemistry for the most part. We'll spend a little bit of time with bonding uh, a little later.